Good evening and welcome to Advent Evening Prayer. This week we reflect on the theme of an angel speaking to Mary's doubt. And next weekend we will offer one more evening prayer service where the theme will be an angel speaking to the shepherd's curiosity. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for evening prayer as we sing Unexpected and Mysterious. of Advent confronts many of our emotions. Sometimes, Sometimes we, we doubt and, and fail to trust God. God. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible, impossible with God. God. Let, us, let it be with us according to your word. And, and we, we will, will all share tidings of comfort, comfort and, and joy. joy. Lord, have mercy on your people, Christ, have mercy on us. Shine your light into our darkness, fill us with your holy love. Be our strength in times of trouble, set us free. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. 
O God, who brings comfort and joy when our faith wavers and we question your word, speak to our doubt. Comfort us with your promises and renew our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from the 33rd chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negeb. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Listen for the word of the Lord from Luke 1, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him Give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, you will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was her time. Her time had come. She was finally old enough, at the ripe age of 13, to be married. By good fortune, and of course, prayer, her family set her up to be married to a young, up-and-coming carpenter from Bethlehem. Bethlehem, the city of David. Imagine getting to travel there and get to meet his family, and then maybe one day getting the chance to go to the nearby city, Jerusalem, and spending more time there. And not only was he from a nicer town than her, Joseph, her fiancé, was from the desired royal line of King David himself. Ah, someday, and that someday was coming soon, filled with anticipation of her up-and-coming wedding. She must have been thrilled with this year of engagement, a year to get ready for what was about to come, what finally would be. And then it happened. That moment when the world seemed to stop. I imagine it was one of the scariest moments of her life. Definitely it was in the top 10, maybe only just following Good Friday and Holy Saturday. It was said at that time, if you saw an angel, it was your time. Your clock was up. And there, standing before her, was the figure of one. She was going to miss out on so much. The marriage that she never had. Children she never held. And then it spoke. Greetings, favored one. She was born in Nazareth. It's not exactly a top 10 places to be from. In fact, if you get close enough to the travelers, passing by on their way to the affluent city of Sepphoris. 
You could sometimes overhear them snickering and whispering to themselves, can anything good come from here? Favored one? This was Nazareth. Population? Less than my graduating class. People probably made their homes out of caves there. There was nothing fancy about this town. It's small, unpopular, average at best. And her, she was a woman. She had no say, let alone to be seen as favored. Then there were those four words. Ha curious meta sue. The Lord is with you. To describe Mary's response to this initial interaction, the NRSV uses this word perplexed. The New International Version says that she was greatly troubled, and the Common English Bible says that she was confused. Each translation is trying to decipher this word, dia terasso. It's the verb terasso with a dia on the front of it. It's the word terasso, like you think of the word terrified. It means disturbed. And that dia on front of it, it does something to that verb. It makes it intense. It's like deeply disturbed. In comparison, when Herod learned about Jesus' birth, he was just terrasso. He was just disturbed. When the disciples saw Jesus walking out on the water to them, they were just terrasso. When Zechariah saw Gabriel in the temple and heard about Elizabeth being pregnant, he was Teresa. Behind those closed doors, when the risen Lord appeared to the disciples, he said, why are you so Teresa? In comparison to what happened, as Matthew describes and as Luke describes in those other situations, in this moment, Mary wasn't just Teresa. She was even more than that. Felt even more than any of those other people felt. Deeply disturbed. And why on earth would she be anything less than that? Wholly disturbed especially with what was coming next. Yet the very next thing out of this creature's mouth to her was this. Do not be afraid, Gabriel. This messenger of God saw her. He saw her fears and her doubts and her deeply rooted faith, even so. He saw her in exactly who she was and where she was from, and then spoke to what mattered most. When she later questioned about how she was going to have this child, a question some say of doubt, and other scholars say it was out of curiosity, he answered her and encouraged her, nothing is impossible with God. How freeing it is to be seen, to have someone notice. Notice our fears, our doubts, and then the faith through grace that runs through us even still. To notice our hard work and our struggles, the efforts we put forth, and the hardships we deal with, and then speak to that and call us, in the midst of it all, favored. 
reminding us, Emmanuel, God with us, has come, is with us now through the power of the Holy Spirit, and is coming again. That means something. It means something to me. And it's needed to be said. God sees us. God sees our pain. God knows the way that our hearts cry out when our friends and our family are diagnosed with cancer. God hears each and every cry for a cure for COVID-19. God has seen in person how illness and disease can cause deep isolation. God has walked where we walk, felt what we feel, cried over the deep loss of a loved one. God sees our hopes and fears, our confusion, our curiosity. God celebrates with our successes and is always there to support us when we feel like failures. God sees our questioning and our doubt. God sees all of us, not just the parts that we want God to see, not just the stuff we get giddy about, but all of us, including the stuff we don't like, the stuff that others may snicker about us for, and chooses us even still. For through Christ's grace, most importantly, God sees our faith highlighting that above all and inviting us to share in the good news. For not only are we seen, but we're also called to see, to see others, to be messengers of good news, to be messengers of God, to look for opportunities to give that needed hug, to pay attention so that we can share deep words of genuine gratitude. To open up time and schedules, not as we see fit, but in the moment for others. To make this place a less lonely world to live in. We're called to notice each other. Looking past brokenness, and mistakes, looking past our shortcomings, and supporting one another as God's beloved children. A couple words, a listening ear, a friendly gesture can mean so much to someone in need. Seen. Let us strive to see others as God sees them and help them to know the overwhelming grace and the freedom that God gives us so that together we can stand up hearing the good news and say, here am I. Let it be. Amen.
Let us pray. God of Zechariah, you break into our fearful world with news of joy and gladness. Give light to all who sit in darkness and guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. God of Joseph, your message inspires us not to be bound up when the world is confusing but rather to place our trust in you. Sustain us in your hope as we await our Savior's birth. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. God of Mary, you know the doubts of your people. Lift up the lowly, especially those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are hungry and all in need of your care, including those on our hearts now. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. God of all creation, you name us as your precious and chosen people and redeem us through Christ. Take hold of our hearts that they may be filled with tidings of comfort and joy. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Lord kingdom Lord come, Lord thy Lord will be done, Lord on Lord earth Lord as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the peace of god accompany your waiting the light of christ warm your hearts and the joy of the spirit fill you with hope amen, amen. Thank you. 
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.